Thanks very much. Um, I'm just looking at Deputy Bruton's expression on his face and a sort of uh, so complete empathy and understanding. I'm totally confused with your answer about the um, loss and damage funding. Could you just tell me straight and simple, is Ireland going to support loss and damage funding at COP27? Well, Straight answer. Well, the position is that we are negotiating a COP27, a, a COP27 as part of the EU. Our work to date over the past year has been working with uh, colleagues in the context of um, developing the position um, with respect to loss and damage. There has been, every every, every member state has, has a different perspective here, and notwithstanding the fact that it is recognised loss and damage um, is, 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 is real, is happening. And it needs and needs to be addressed. It's how it's addressed that has been the context of discussions internally within the EU, which informs the position going forward. And um, oh, for, for the me conference now, itself. So within that space, Ireland certainly has been advocating that we engage through the through first of all through existing financial mechanisms, establishing whether or not there's scope there to support loss and damage initiatives. Also, we've been looking at uh, other options in terms of what a new financing uh, mechanism would actually look like going forward, how that could be funded. But all of this, throughout all of this, we have been um, working through the Glasgow Dialogues and hoping to gain traction in the context of those discussions with other parties in the context of what is required. How can these funds actually be delivered? How can there be no slippage in terms of uh, averting and minimising what we would call as adaptation and mitigation as well? So all I'm saying is that we are being as vicious as we can in this space and working with EU colleagues, and that has, you know, Deputy Smith, that, that, that's had practical expression by the fact that yesterday the Council conclusions were agreed, and for the first time uh, the EU has acknowledged that there needs to be an agenda item on loss and damage uh, at, COP, at COP27, and okay, I think that so, is very, very so, welcome, and that, I think that speaks to the work okay, that sorry, I'm and, and other member out, states have done, including through expert groups which have developed uh, different option papers for consideration by different member states. And uh, we certainly hope to see traction in this space. I'm sorry, uh, I asked. During the course of COP. I, I, I dare, I dare I, say. I, I'm our, almost our, sorry, I asked. He's learned from the master, Deputy Smith. I did ask for a straight, <laughs> simple answer. I'd hate to get a complex answer from you. Um, I'm sorry, Deputy. I'm just saying that we are, we, we're, we're not alone it's okay, in this space. I get we it, negotiate I get it. COPs in the context of you our membership of the EU. You can't answer what you're saying. Um, uh, you, you can't answer it because you don't know if Ireland supports it or not, and that should be the, should be the answer because you're, we're going about it in, in a roundabout way. You just said that some states support it, other states support it, but you can't answer if Ireland does. So park that one. I, I think at the that outset, please, said, I want to ask you. I, I want I, to ask I, you another I, question. At the outset, I, I did I did acknowledge the fact that Ireland. Is, uh, has been one of the most ambitious member states in this space and continues okay. to work with okay. EU colleagues in ensuring that's reflected. Thank you, we um, have that point. Sorry. I have one yeah, more sure. question. I have yes. that point, thanks very much. I, I, well, I have two more questions. I might get to ask you one of them. You talked there about uh, the crisis in Ukraine giving us an opportunity to engage the public in the costs associated with their consumption and to look at the reduction in the use of fossil fuels. Do you see this as an opportunity to engage the fossil fuel industry on uh, the costs associ associated with their increased production of gas and oil products and infrastructure across the planet during the crisis of Ukraine? I think those are the discussions that absolutely um, are taking place and they need to be taking place. And in the context, again, of loss and damage, you've got to look at and I'm conscious that you received presentations earlier on from 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 NGOs in this space as well. There has to be, and there's a report I think published yesterday in the context of the proceeds that are the the income associated from fossil fuel companies, etc., and potential there for for you know can those profits somehow be be a, a windfall tax or something like that uh, be used to help address uh, the. Um, the loss and damage being experienced by 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 parties and particularly LDCs and SIDS, and those are those again. Uh, there is you know there is opportunities here to look at whether there are potential for for carbon market transactions for uh, solidarity fund levies etc. Uh, on profits from fossil fuel fuels etc. These do take time time to get in place. Uh, obviously there's 
further analysis required in terms of of, of such of such um, you know negotiations, uh, including how it might affect the, EB, the CBAN mechanism, EU ETS solidarity funds, etc. And they're also mentioned in the context of you know only developed countries admitting that a big part of fossil fuel production is in developing countries and further analysis is required there. But absolutely, I mean, Ireland is very, as, a, as I said, by our, our, our association with the Beyond Oil and Gas Alliance last year in the context of our preparations for COP and how we're negotiating with EU, EU member states, they have to be part of, of the solution. They have to be brought in and made, and the polluter pays principle. And it really needs to be considered in this context. Thank you, Mr. McLaughlin.